the new titans and Ukrainian nationalists in Mariupol. They have refused Russia's offer to surrender, unlike thousands of Ukrainian regulars. The offensive against them rages on. Across Mariupol, nationalist lines are buckling. Here, a group of Chechen fighters show the aftermath of a gun battle. Eight nationalists were killed in this warehouse alone. Among them, we are told, at least one foreign mercenary. 400 are believed to be in Mariupol. There have been many civilians in the city whom the nationalists have been using as human shields. That's why we couldn't shoot. But once they retreated to the factory, we easily took it under control. At the Ilyich factory, pro-Russian forces are still clearing away mines and booby traps left behind by Ukrainian troops and nationalists. They are still finding new caches of weapons and ammunition, sometimes worth millions. Here's another huge arsenal, storeroom of the Ukrainian military. Here you go, a, a shoulder-launched anti-air missile, Igla, also abandoned here. You've got to be careful. A whole stockpile of shoulder-launched anti-air missiles, again, the same things. Igla missiles just left and abandoned here. Detonators for grenades, as well as various rockets and munitions. Each Igla manpad has a market value of about $200,000. Half a dozen were abandoned just in this room. There are dozens and dozens more warehouses and buildings that haven't yet been cleared, including collapsed ones. Here are Ukrainian armored vehicles, which they hid inside buildings, industrial buildings, here in the Ilyich factory inside the vast industrial zone at the heart of Mariupol. Again, these, these vehicles were hidden uh, inside civilian areas where Ukrainian nationalists also took cover. In this industrial zone, they held hundreds of people as human shields, workers and nearby residents. Aside from holding civilians as human shields, they slaughtered them if they tried to run and even poisoned water supplies as they fled. They've been leaving five-liter containers with water in apartments, but the water was poisoned with drugs or toxins. Despite the damage done, the fanatical core of the Ukrainian Azov nationalists here are unlikely to surrender. They know the crimes that they are wanted for. They know that they face decades in prison. And they have chosen to drag this out hoping to buy enough time for the Ukrainian government to somehow save them.